到了。Dueling Genre Productions presents Geek by Night, Episode Two, Reboot Part Two, written by Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez. Are you sure we have the right floor? I would have thought a toy company would have a more whimsical environment. You're telling me. I mean, I'm not saying I was expecting Robin Williams being attacked by a crossword puzzle, but geez, have some toys lying around or something. Can I help you two with something?、Uh, yes, ma'am. We're actually trying to find someone who works here. His name's Elliot.、Mar、Never mind. I see him. Sir, excuse me, sir. You can't just go back there. Gibson, you're gonna get us arrested. So I told Johnson, "Hey, if I wanted a battle beast, I would have invited your mother." <laughs> anyway, Elliot here is first up to bat. He's promised us something revolutionary, so get ready to be blown away. Take it away, Markowitz. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks so much.、Um, so, what do we talk about when we talk about toys? I think we. Elliot, Elliot, look over here. Oh God. It's me. Gibson from the early to mid two thousands. Friend of yours, Markowitz? No, uh, kinda. I mean, technically, yes. Hey, buddy, you busy? Gibson, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you, Elliot. If this is your idea of a joke, it's both vague and awkwardly executed. No, sir, I have nothing to do with this. Elliot, dude, it's an emergency. Three minutes. That's all I need. Do you need to be excused, Elliot? Uh, uh, I mean, I volunteer as tribute. I beg your pardon. I mean, I'll go. I'll do my presentation while Elliot does his thing with the、uh, crazy guy. Yeah. All right, whatever. Show us what you got, Gilly. I can give you three minutes. I took an improv class last summer. I could kiss you. Pass. Could you get Gretchen to do it? Whenever you're ready. So, fairy tales, kind of a big thing right now. Well, what if I told you? Your favorite fairy tale characters were actually werewolves. You look good, man. So you work here now? Trying to. Very cool. Very cool. I'm doing pretty all right.、Uh, check out this service pen I got at my work. It's the Green Lantern emblem. Cosmo gave it to me for my 10-year anniversary. You still work at Mjolnir's? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Never mind. Look, Jeff, I'm kind of really busy here. What was the emergency? Emergency? Oh, right. Yes. Uh, I don't really know how to say this, but Elliot, it's Mindy. What about Mindy? She's she's sick. Really sick. Dying, actually. So you know, sucks. Oh my god. And she's really scared. I've never seen her like this before, man. I mean. You know, it's Mindy, so she tries to put on this big show about being tough and over everything. But she's just, she's been talking about the good old days a lot lately. You know, you, me, and her. How much fun we used to have. She misses it. I miss it. So I thought maybe tonight, before your flight, we could all hang out together. You know, like old times. You're totally lying. What? Mindy tried hitting me with her car the first day she got her license. If she were really dying, the absolute last thing she'd ever want to do with the precious time she had left is hang out with either of us. So how about you stop Gary kinging me and tell me what is really going on? Ugh. Fine. I got a Facebook account. Gibson, I really don't have time for this right now. You're gonna go to England with this Gretchen chick, and you're gonna come back engaged. How do you know that? Oh come on, Elliot. You've been talking about doing this since we were kids. You meet the girl of your dreams. You fly her to England and ask her to marry under some bridge or something. Look, the point is, you're going to be an adult, a real adult. But you can't yet because we still have something we need to finish. Oh yeah, what's that? The game, Elliot. The game. That's a joke, right? Tell me you didn't come all the way down here, interrupt my presentation, and embarrass me in front of a room full of really important people because you want to play a tabletop RPG we made up when we were kids. You're seriously telling me you don't ever wonder what could have been? We have a whole story, a, a whole world we left untold because we let stupid life stuff get in the way. We need to finish this so we can both move on. Gibson, we've moved on. At least I have. Fine. I figured it was a long shot anyway. 
You know, you used to be fun, Elliot. Don't you ever want to stop being a grown-up? Even if it's just for one night. Who just talked out of her ass for five minutes and got Joel and the board of very important people to seriously consider her made-up on-the-spot werewolf fairy tale idea? This bitch! What's up, man? Who's, who's the weird guy? There he is, Elliot Markowitz, the disappearing man. What the hell, guy? Joel, I'm so sorry, but, uh, that guy, he was, um, my creative partner. Is he on our payroll? Oh, it's nothing formal. He's just this guy I like to bounce ideas off of. He found a flaw in our pitch at the last minute, and I decided it was better to push the presentation to tomorrow. I really want to have something airtight to show you and the shareholders. Cool, cool, yeah. That's not even remotely a decision you get to make. Joel, I promise. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to give Nostalgia Toys the product it's been waiting for. It's going to be great. No, Elliot, great was what this morning was supposed to be. After your little summer camp skit, tomorrow's pitch is going to have to be nothing short of transcendent. Otherwise, you'll be too busy writing a new resume to go on your trip to England. Capiche? Oh, and do yourself a favor. Get Gwen to help you out. That werewolf fairy tale pitch you just gave? Out of this world. Dude, tomorrow? Aren't you leaving for England tomorrow? Gretchen's going to flip. Why don't you just do the cat thing? Because I think I have a better idea. Cosmo, I'm back. What's with all the construction, man? Was I supposed to know about this? Excuse me, buddy. Hey, hi. Hey, how's it going? Uh, the store is actually closed right now. Yeah, but if you'd like, I can redirect you to one of the other Monopoly Comics locations nearby. Monopoly Comics? No, no, this is Mjolnir's. I was here, like, just an hour ago. Oh, 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 I see you must be... Ah, Jeff Gibson, employee. Damn straight. Who the hell are you? Well, I'm Billy, Max Carmichael's assistant, and, well, I hope this doesn't come as too much of a shock, but uh, your employer, Cosmo Peters, actually sold this property to my employer, Mr. Carmichael, earlier today. As of right now, you're standing on the newest Monopoly Comics location. It's all very exciting. Big, big plans. That's impossible. Cosmo would never sell. He has standards. He believes in the sanctity of independent businesses. Yeah, we get that a lot. Well, regardless, uh, Mr. Carmichael believes that everyone has a price, and it seems as if Cosmo had one, too. Now, I think the best thing for you to do, Mr. Gibson, is to put away the past and start thinking about the future. I understand you've worked at the store for 10 years. <laughs> that shows commitment, and I respect that. We are always looking for store managers. We would love to have you on the Monopoly team, and the job would come with some benefits. Define benefits. Uh, increased salary, better hours, health insurance. Bet you never had that before. Oh, and you would also get two Monopoly comics polo shirts like those guys are wearing. Nothing to do from your paycheck. Look at them. Look at they look. They look so spiffy. Uniforms? No way. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. Think of it as a superhero getting a new costume, right? That that's a that's a thing you guys like. Iron Man. He's always got a new suit. I guess so. Would I get to keep my Green Lantern pin? Oh, no, I'm afraid that's against dress code. But I earned this. I've worked at this store for ten years. Well, technically, you worked at Mjolnir's for ten years. Once you started Monopoly Comics, we would need you to go through orientation, training seminars, just like all the other new employees. That's it. Listen, uh, what's your name? Billy. You got a last name? Hey, how about we just stick with first names? Okay, fine, Billy. You could take your cushy corporate death sentence and shove it so far up your ass, it can see the sunrise. I'm out of here. I think you're forgetting something. What are you talking about? I'm afraid I'll be needing to take that green lantern pen off your hands, guy. But I earned this pen. But you didn't technically pay for it, which actually makes it property of Monopoly Comics. But Cosmo gave me this pen. He, he gave me this in an iTunes gift card, and it was the nicest thing anybody ever did for me. Well, that is just a very, very sad sentence. Pin, please. You'll be sorry. I won't forget this. Oh, I already have. In fact, I don't even remember your name. Whatever. I'm out of here. All right. Goodbye, Gorbson. Billy, who is that strange young man threatening you just now? Just a disgruntled ex-employee. Nothing to worry about, Mr. Carmichael. Oh. Good. Very good. I'm far too excited about this new location to let something silly ruin my day. 
Look at this place, Billy. I can practically feel the promise and possibility vibrating off the walls. Like Michelangelo standing before an unbroken block of marble. Yes, it is certainly another building we own. Billy. Sir, you know I'm on board with whatever you have planned. But? But I just don't understand the point of acquiring all these locations. I mean, I've ran the numbers again and again. Comic books are everywhere, Billy. Films, television shows, theme park rides. Comics hold the keys to the next billion dollar idea. And I want my cut. Sir, I understand and appreciate where your head's at, but comic book retail? Most shops can barely turn a profit, let alone be lucrative. Oh, they will be. They will be. Billy, that man is trying to get into the store. Oh, that's Ernesto. I guess he doesn't know where at lunch. Hey, Ernesto! Hey, it, it's... Go, go to lunch. Go to... Comer. Comer. It's... I don't... Go to lunch. It's... He, he, oh, he, he's got it. He's going. He's going. Yeah, he's... He's actually a really good guy. No, no, he seemed nice. Tomorrow? Are you insane? Elliot, we're flying to London tomorrow. Gretchen, chill. It's going to be okay. I took the rest of the day off so we can get everything done, and I know how much of a wreck you are for not at least three hours early for our flight, so I pushed the flight back to the evening. We'll have plenty of time. Why'd you push the presentation back? Well, I kind of ran into Gibson today. Gibson? Like, Jeff Gibson? Wow. How is he? I remember you told me he was probably going to end up crazy and homeless. He kind of just looked the same. Exactly the same, actually. He was even wearing the same clothes he used to wear. It was like 2008 Gibson had traveled into the future to come see me. What did he want? Nothing, not really. He just wanted to hang out. I think he misses me or something. That's sweet, I guess. Yeah, I think I could have been nicer to him. I don't know. He wanted to hang out tonight before I left for England. Maybe you should. You think? He used to be a really big part of your life, Elliot. Yeah, but that job's kind of taken now. Go. Have a beer with your friend. I think this might end up being exactly what you need right now. This is the last thing I need right now. You think you're upset? You just lost a job. I lost my favorite thinking spot. Those are much harder to come by. I can't believe Cosmo sold it. I can't believe I couldn't sell a single one of these damn energy drinks. Oh no, what a terrible turn of events. Whatever. You've obviously never dealt with a house full of passive-aggressive sorority sisters. And I never will. Never, ever, ever, ever. Hey, at least you talked to Elliot, right? Yeah, fat lot of good that did. He's like a real adult now. Meanwhile, I'm an unemployed 30-year-old bachelor who lives in my parents' basement. How am I just now realizing what a generic loser I am? I mean, he kind of is. No, Gibson, say it with me. I'm not a loser. I don't want to. Gibson, I know what you're doing, and I don't appreciate it. Jeffrey Alabaster Gibson. <sighs> I'm not a loser. Again, I'm not a loser. Mindy, you too. I'm not a loser. Good. No, I mean, I never thought I was a loser in the first place. I don't need help in the self-esteem department. I'm fine. I just want to sell these stupid energy drinks. Well, it's just a matter of mind over matter. You'll figure it out. Maybe this is God giving me an intervention. Maybe I shouldn't go out tonight. I, I could go online, fill out some applications, maybe go back to school. This could be the moment where I turn it all around. Hello? Hey, Gibson, it's Elliot. Can't believe you still have the same phone number. Listen, do you still want to play the game tonight? Are you kidding? All right, awesome. Let's meet at the Sanford at 8. I'm going to bring my friend Gwen, so feel free to invite some people too. I'll see you there. Yeah, man, see you there. Jesus, that was close. For a second there, I thought tonight was going to suck. Now, where did I put my dice? Are we seriously about to play a board game at a bar? On a Wednesday? It's not a board game. It's a tabletop RPG. Oh, my mistake. I guess we're okay then. Don't think of it as playing a game at a bar. This is research. And you really think this is how we should be spending our time? Instead of, you know, working on your presentation? Look, just trust me, okay, Gwen? Please? Gibson will be here any minute and then it'll all make sense. I have a plan. <sighs> Fine. But I'm not doing this without alcohol. I'm gonna need, like, three alcohols, minimum. Worry not, mortals. Your game master has arrived. And I apparently have nothing else going on in my life, so I'm here too. Sounds familiar. 
I'm Gwen. I work with Elliot. Simon. I don't technically work with Gibson, but I think our situations are similar. And I'm Jeff Gibson. I'll be leading this little shindig. Hey, I know you. You're the asshole who works in Mjolnir's. You threw out my pull list while I was on vacation and banned me from the store. Please, can we not talk about Mjolnir's? It's a very sensitive subject for me right now. He got fired. Yep, there it is. Thank you, Simon. Wow, bummer, man. Yeah, it's pretty much ruined my whole day. You know, when you work somewhere for over ten years, you'd think it would be- All right, hey, uh, let's start the game, huh? We can catch up any old time. Right, yes. Lady and gentlemen, I present the game. I don't understand what I'm looking at. Oh, it's this great game Elliot and I designed ourselves in my basement while we were in high school. You have no idea how happy that visual makes me. Yep. Elliot and I were pretty damn near close to finishing this thing, but I think tonight might be the night. Okay, so, we continue our quest through the deserts of Arid Sen. Whoa, wait, Arid Sen? Why does that sound so familiar? It's where we stopped last time. Last time? That was eight years ago. You saved our game for eight years? Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't I? Gibson, we have to start a new game. I mean, come on, Mindy's not even here to play as her character. Sorry, Blake! Just got done selling not some, not even half, but all. All of these stupid energy drinks. Bow, bitches! How the hell did you pull that off? I just, uh, slapped some new labels on them and told everybody they cure hangovers. Do they? Out of my hands now. Once I renamed them Drunk Over, I couldn't keep people away. Sold out in an hour. Huh. I should get into marketing. Do you... Do you have any more left? Just that case Jeff was supposed to sell at work today before he got fired. Gwen, this is my evil sister, Mindy. Wow, Elliot, looking sharp. Never thought I'd see you in a suit and tie. Wow, Mindy, it deeply upsets me that you're in college already. Yep, time flies. All right, let's get this nerd fest over with. Great. So as I was saying, the party makes their way across the deserts of Arid Sen. Gibson, we can't just start the story off from where we left eight years ago. No one's going to have any idea what's going on. We can use the same characters, but let's start the story over. You know, like a reboot. Oh, come on. Everybody hates reboots. Reboots are the devil. It's not fair to the new people. Fine. But let the record show that I am vehemently against it. Here, everybody take a character sheet. Me, Elliot, and Mindy will use our old ones. To save time, I went ahead and made extras. Here, pass them around. My character's name is Bashlout, the Viking magician prince and son of the legendary sorcerer king Bashlin from the island of Nigeria. Gibson, you realize that Nigeria is an actual real place, right? It's not just from spam emails. Well, I guess I do now. Gwen, who are you? Shine Star XJ9, an eight foot tall robot built for war and destruction by an evil scientist, but escaped my laboratory prison and am now dedicated to helping mankind. Wait, this game has Vikings and robots? Yeah, I know, right? So sick. Okay, I am Canada, a space samurai from the year 2929. Since the age of five, I was trained in all aspects of warfare and stealth. My quest is to avenge the death of my twin sister, Suki, at the hands of an evil alien shogun warlord. God, this thing is a gold mine. What was that? Nothing, nothing. I am Vincent, a simple farm boy from a small village who was taken in by pirates and raised as one of their own. I'm on a mission to rescue my kidnapped sweetheart, whose hand is promised to an evil king. Did you just describe the princess bride? No, I described the backstory of my character, who's named Vincent. Okay, but that was obviously the princess bride. Not obviously. Vincent's story is completely different. What's his pirate name? The Dread Pirate Wesley. Gibson, shut up. As you wish. Mindy, your turn. I'm Summer Roberts. Oh, Jesus, I forgot. What, from the OC? When we first played this, Gibson said I could be anyone I wanted in a role-playing game, and when I was 11, I wanted to be Summer Roberts. You can't be a character from another story. It makes no sense. Uh, you're a samurai from outer space. He's a magic viking. She's a robot, and he's the princess bride. How does Summer Roberts being here make any less sense? All right, fine. You're Summer Roberts. You're Summer goddamn Roberts. Let's get this show on the road. You were all sitting by yourselves in a tavern at nighttime. You overhear an old man going on and on about an ancient treasure hidden deep in a necrogoblin cave. <clears throat> to try and steal the treasure from the necrogoblins is to knock at death's door. Only a fool dare try. Well, I am not afraid. I say we all do it together. I'm in, but for the record, I'd much rather be partying because I'm still season one summer and have a lot of growing to do. I'm in as well. I want to start my own legend and get out from under my father's shadow. I'll go too. Not because of the treasure, because I'm a machine and don't need money. 
but because Shine Star XJ9 is afraid of being alone. You walk cautiously through the cave, blinded by pitch black darkness. I use my flashlight eyes to see in the dark. You look at the ceiling. Goblins. Goblins everywhere. Ah! Run away! Everyone run away! No, no, circle up. Get in a circle. What? No! We'd all just die at once. What are we doing here, guys? At this rate, I won't even live long enough to get my Wonder Woman costume. I pull out my predecessor's sword and prepare for battle. We can take these guys. For Chris Mika! Gwen, you killed the wizard! Oh, come on, that guy was totally gonna betray us later. I just saved us a really cheesy double cross scene. It wouldn't have been cheesy. What was that? You continue down the cave when you stumble upon a time portal. But the portal is being guarded by Arachnoid, the Enigma Spider. You must solve her three riddles before she will grant you access. I feel like my whole life has been leading to this moment. Anybody else mind if I order some shots? Yes, shots. The Battle of Gettysburg rages all around you, north and south fighting to the death, brother against brother, cannon fire bellows and smoke covers the sky. Wait, was Robert E. Lee at the Battle of Gettysburg? We should totally kill Robert E. Lee. I don't think an assassination side quest is the best idea right now. We have to find the Necrogoblin King and stop him from raising the army of lost warriors before he escapes through another time portal. Shots? More shots? I'm getting... I'm getting more shots. Whoa, hey. How hard do we plan on going tonight? Dude, don't even worry about it. I've still got that last case of drunkovers. Yes! Drunkovers! You emerge from the time portal in a space station from 2929, Canada's home. There you find the Necrogoblin King waiting for you, with the army of lost warriors at his side. Battle formations. Dude, we don't have any battle formations! This is our first game! I'm just saying we can't just run around doing whatever this time. We have to be a team. The Necrogoblin warriors begin vomiting out hundreds of tiny mechanical wasps. Running sounds nice right now. No, no, come on! We can do this! Bashalt's right. We can do this. XJ9, can you spray anything to kill the robo-wasps? Only one way to find out. Canada is dead, having sacrificed himself to send the army of lost warriors back to the Hades. But the Necrogoblin King is weak. He needs only one more major attack to finish him off. I'm all out of stuff I can do. My battery's empty. Summer, it's your move. I can't. I don't have any weapons. I'm just a sassy high school girl. I can't even get a nerdy guy I like to choose me over that tramp from Pittsburgh. Wait, Gwen, throw Minnie the sword of Robert E. Lee. <laughs> and Simon thought killing him was dumb. It was deeply, deeply dumb. Just sword. All right, fine. Ah, what foolishness is this? A child cannot defeat the Necro Goblin King. I am no mere child. I am Summer Roberts of Newport Beach, and in the name of peace, order, and light, I banish you to the abyss that spawned you. No! And the attack works. The Necro Goblin King is dead. For real this time. Yes! Welcome to the OC, bitch! This game's awesome. Where can I get one? Yeah. Do you guys have a website? Sorry, fellas. This one's a Jeff and Elliot original. Last call, folks. Hey, uh, Gib, you mind if I talk to you outside for a minute? Sure thing, pal. Hey, wait. Is that Cosmo? I believe it is. He looks quite drunk. Ah, oh, balls. I better go make sure he's okay. Hold that thought, would you, Elliot? Uh, yeah, sure thing. Cos, how's it going? Well, uh, not so bad, actually, considering I just pissed away the last 25 years of my life for no reason whatsoever. Not to mention 25 years of my father's life. It's like... It's, it's, it's a lot of years. Yeah. Not my favorite day, either. Gibson, I'm so sorry. I swear I would never sell a store. I mean, I thought I wouldn't. I don't remember it happening. At all. It's like I blacked out or something. Well, what do you remember? I remember Max Carmichael and this bratty little sidekick coming into my store and they asked to buy Mueller's from me. Then I just sort of did it. Did you at least get some nice bread for it? I sold it for a dollar. What? How? Why? Are you insane? (laughs) It seemed like a good idea at the time. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh... There, there, Koss. It'll be all right. Somehow. Hey, uh, Mindy, how about tossing this guy some drunk over? Drunk over! Sure thing! 
Come on, Cosmo. How's he holding up? Well, he just jettisoned his whole life into outer freaking space, so not too great, actually. Well, I think I've got something that'll cheer you up. Oh, yeah? Challenge accepted. The game, Gibson. I think it could be big. I know, right? It was so much fun. Even Mindy was getting into it. It was just like the old days. No, not just with our friends. Did you see that crowd we had just watching us play? I think the game could be a hit. Like a real money-making hit. What are you talking about? Look, my job wants me to bring the next big thing, you know? Something people will really freak out over, and I think the game is just what they're looking for. Whoa, you mean you want me to work for you? Like a partnership? That's great! No, 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 no. It wouldn't be a partnership, per se. More like we pay you for the rights to the game, and we, you know, keep the old nostalgia toys magic. So you want to buy it for me? I mean, don't you want my help in making it better? It's not that I don't want it, Gib. I'm just not sure if working on this together would be the best deal for- I can't believe this! Is this why you wanted to hang out with Jeff again? To buy him out of the thing you created together and then go back to pretending he doesn't exist anymore? Mindy, it's not like that. Do you have any idea how much it meant to Jeff when you reached out to him? He hasn't been this excited in months! You're his best friend, Elliot! He loves you! How could you just play him like this? I'm not playing him! Gibson, I'm not playing you! You know, for a second there, for a good solid second, I actually thought you just wanted to hang out again. I actually thought you wanted to be friends with me again. I never stopped being your friend, Gibson. Oh, yeah, sure. Friends just stop talking for seven years all the time. That's totally normal. Yes, it is. It is normal. It's called growing up. People change. People lose touch. It doesn't mean I broke up with you. It just means I wanted to start doing different things with my life. Well, why did that mean you have to stop hanging out with me? Because you wouldn't grow up. You wouldn't change. I'd start going to the gym or dieting and you'd make fun of me. I wouldn't want to go see bad action movies with you and you'd throw a fit. You'd call girls bitches when they wouldn't flirt back with you. And when I told you to stop, you'd just say everybody was being too sensitive. You weren't the kind of person I wanted to be around anymore, Gibson. And that broke my heart. But what choice did I have? I didn't want to be the same guy anymore. I wanted to change. I wanted to be better. Bartender, I need a drink. Hey, buddy. Didn't you hear me? It's past last call. Great. Terrific. First I lose my job. Then my best friend dicks me over for money. And now I can't even get a damn drink. What else could go wrong? Oh my god, do you see that? Jesus. I hope nobody was hurt. Is that Swift Industries? My father used to work there. Uh, earthquake? I don't think that was an earthquake. No. Look, there's a... Bright yellow light coming from outside. That's called the sun, Simon. It's still the middle of the night. You can still see the stars in the sky, see? Oh, weird. But where's that light coming from then? It's so bright. I can't see a source. In fact, it's almost like the light is just floating there. Like it's suspended in air. Fascinating. Hey, Spock, you want to step away from the window, please? What the? Hey! Get up from behind the bar! Here's a 20. You can keep the change. Ooh. So, Elliot, honestly, was your job the only reason you came out here tonight? It's important to me, all right? It just is. Well, you know what? Take it. Take what? The game. You can have it. I don't know what I would do with it anyway. I hadn't even pulled it off the shelf in like five years. Maybe just name like a mountain or a troll after me or something. Jeff, what are you doing? Close the door. We don't know what that weird light is. I'm going home. Well, he isn't suffocating to death, so I guess it's safe to go outside. So, I guess we should go home now? I'm going to try to get a sample of whatever's outside. Elliot, I know he can be a jerk sometimes, and I know it can be difficult to have him in your life. Trust me, I do. But... I always kind of saw you as my other brother, you know? Your family. And what you did to Jeff today? You don't do that to family. So what's the game plan? Same as before. I have to present the game to Joel and the shareholders tomorrow or I'm toast. Are you sure that's what you want to do? What other option do I have, Gwen? I can't lose my job. Not now. I have to be able to provide for Gretchen, for a family. I get that, Elliot. But I don't think this is the way you want to save your job. You're hurting people you care about. I care about Gretchen. Gibson and I were really close once, but I grew out of him. 
How long do you think it'll take for you to grow out of me? Oh, come on. That's not fair. Gwen. Gwen! Drunk over. <laughs> Doesn't even work. Alright, Cosmo. Your bed is just behind this door. Just put the key into the keyhole and turn it. You can do this. Ah, stupid door handle shocked me. Ah, son of a... I feel... I think I'm going to be sick. What's happening to me? Ah! Geek by Night is executive produced by Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez. Starring Chris O'Connor as Jeff Gibson. Matt Mazel as Elliot Markowitz. Ray Russo as Gwen Allen. Andrew Ball as Simon Holt. Morgan Spencer as Mindy Gibson. Scott Tofty as Max Carmichael. Nick Jimenez as Billy. And introducing Naomi Wong as Lorelai Swift. Also starring Chelsea Kern as Gretchen West, Paul Mackey as Cosmo Peters, Zach Luna as Joel Vickers, Rachel Banks as Veronica Belknap, and Rachel Gatlin as Mystery Woman. Additional voice work by Hila Asifi, Rahul Karuk, Rhonda Mitchell, Bradley William Smith, Nathan Dunn, D. Tyler Fultz, Nicole Marie, Paul Homestar, Iabu Morrison, Vicky Claremont, Sarah Golding, Brady Odier, Anthony Legato, Frank Spear, and Eric Rivera. Reboot written by Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez. Directed and edited by Scott Corelli. Geek by Night theme by Zach Gibson. Original score and final mix by Scott Tofty. Credits read by Brian Brown. Special thanks to associate producer Trenton Anthony Smith. Geek by Night, created by Scott Corelli. All characters in this work are entirely fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Copyright 2016, Dueling Genre Productions. Thanks for listening.